7 Ways to Generate Passive Income with Crypto Are you wondering how to increase your passive income streams through Bitcoin and cryptocurrency? Want to know how to grow your cryptocurrency earnings with minimal effort? Trading is one way to make money in the cryptocurrency industry. However, making profits from buying low and selling high is definitely not a wise strategy for amateur investors like you and me. Despite spending countless hours learning the ins and outs of trading cryptocurrencies, keeping up with everything that happens in the rapidly evolving crypto market, there's no guarantee you're going to make a healthy return. The truth is, no one can predict short-term price movements, not even the best investors in the world. Fortunately, as cryptocurrency is becoming more mainstream, it also opens opportunities for passive income. Today, we're going to talk all about the seven ways you can generate passive income with crypto. So let's get right to it. It is possible to earn passive income with crypto, but returns will depend on the method chosen and the amount of crypto you have to start. Given its volatility, there's no guarantee that any crypto strategies will deliver any returns. Still, those holding large amounts of crypto have several avenues to potentially generate yield with crypto. It's up to you to weigh the risks of trying to earn a yield on your crypto and its potential rewards versus the risk-reward ratio of simply holding for potential long-term gains or cashing out some or all of your holdings. Many of the potential ways to earn passive income with crypto involve lending and borrowing. Other methods, including running a node, mining, or staking coins, are more technical. Here are seven ways to earn passive income with different types of crypto. Number one, proof of stake, POS, staking. Proof of stake is a consensus method used in blockchain technology that serves as an alternative to Bitcoin's proof of work. POS networks agree on which transactions are valid through a process that involves nodes locking up or staking large amounts of tokens for a time. Crypto staking replaces the role of mining. Instead of miners receiving new block rewards, as in POW, validators receive new block rewards in POS. Validators don't need expensive computer hardware, but they do need to have sufficient tokens to have a chance at adding the next block to the chain. Many networks require an initial investment before allowing staking. Some popular types of cryptocurrency available to stake on large exchanges include Cosmos, ATOM, Tezos, XTZ, and Cardano, ADA. Number two, interest-bearing digital asset accounts. A number of service providers allow users to deposit their crypto and earn a yield on it, as they might with a savings account. This has become an attractive product for investors because traditional cash savings account yields have fallen so low in recent years. To use such, simply open an account and deposit your crypto or stablecoin. There might be a lockup period involved where users can't access their funds for a fixed amount of time. In exchange for the deposit, users earn interest on crypto. Stablecoins like US Dollar Coin, USDC, and DAI, DAI, often have the best interest rates. BlockFi, Celsius, and Vald are a few popular companies offering these types of accounts. Number three, lending. There are several ways that investors can lend out crypto. In all cases, the idea is to loan crypto to someone else for a time in exchange for a fee. The amount earned will depend on three things. The total value of crypto being lent, the duration of the loan, and the interest rate. Higher rates, longer loans, and larger loans can lead to more income from the interest paid by borrowers. In some cases, those earning crypto passive income in this way get to choose the terms of the loans they create. In others, a third party negotiates the terms ahead of time. Margin lending is lending crypto to traders who want to trade using leverage from borrowed funds. This allows traders to amplify their positions with those assets and repay the loans with interest. Crypto exchanges handle most of the details on your behalf in this case. Users only need to make their digital assets available. Centralized lending involves relying on the lending infrastructure and terms set by a third party. In this case, the interest rates and lockup periods will be fixed ahead of time. Users must deposit their crypto to the lending platform before earning interest. Decentralized lending, also known as DeFi lending, this option involves using lending services directly through the blockchain. There are no intermediaries and lenders and borrowers interact through smart contracts that automate interest rates. Peer-to-peer -peer 
lending. Platforms that enable peer-to-peer -peer lending make it possible for people to borrow from each other directly. Users first have to deposit their crypto into the lending platform's custodial wallet. Then they can set the interest rate, terms of the loan, and decide how much they'd like to lend. This gives users some control over the crypto lending process. Number 4. Cloud Mining Mining proof-of-work cryptocurrencies requires substantial investment in computing hardware along with the necessary technical knowledge. Cloud mining contracts offer an alternative. Instead of setting up a new mining rig, people can simply rent hashing power from an established operation. In exchange for a fixed sum of money, people can buy cloud mining contracts that entitle them to a certain hash rate for a certain period of time. The contract owner receives new coins in proportion to the size of their contract. Warning: Many cloud mining scams exist. Those interested in cloud mining would do well to do as much research as possible and make sure the company offering the contract is legitimate. Number 5. Dividend Earning Tokens Tokenized stocks are cryptocurrencies backed by shares of equity in a company. Sometimes these tokens offer dividend payouts in the same manner that shareholders receive dividends. Dividends are usually paid on a quarterly basis. Number 6. Yield Farming The term yield farming became popular in 2020 and 2021 with the rise of decentralized exchanges, which rely on smart contracts and liquidity provided by investors. To yield farm, investors deposit tokens into a special smart contract called a liquidity pool. Those who provide liquidity in this way receive a portion of the fees generated through traders accessing the pool. Yield farming is one of the more complex options listed here and will require a lot of additional research for those interested, but it can also be one of the most lucrative options available to make passive income with crypto. Yield farming often requires some Ethereum, ETH, along with a DeFi token of some kind, like Uniswap, UNI, or Pancake Swap. Cake, or possibly a stablecoin like Tether, USDT. Number 7. Running a Lightning Node The Bitcoin Lightning Network is a Layer 2 scaling solution that allows for lightning-fast affordable micropayments at scale. The nation of El Salvador, which has made Bitcoin legal tender, uses Lightning for its Bitcoin transactions, for example. Lightning nodes facilitate these transactions. Those who run nodes receive a small portion of each transaction fee that gets routed through their node. Running a Lightning node generates a very little income. Because fees are so low, those who run a node might only make a few dollars per month in Bitcoin, or less. Some users have reported earning as much as $25 in one month, though. This also depends on the price of BTC versus a user's local fiat currency. This method doesn't generate that much Bitcoin passive income. Most participants do it to support the use of Bitcoin as a medium of exchange. And as the Lightning Network grows and more transactions get routed through it, the income for node operators will presumably rise as well. That's all for today. Also, we'd like to mention that this is not a channel intended to provide specific financial advice, and we do not ask you to invest in any company. This is merely a channel directed towards bringing educational content to your doorstep. With that in mind, before you invest in anything, we recommend you do thorough, wide-spectrum research on the topic. We hope you liked this video. Let us know what you think in the comments section below, and make sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time at the Edpreneur. Goodbye!